Hi, hello. Guys. Hey, how you doing, man? Hello, hello. Good, 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 good. Seeing you guys on YouTube. Very familiar faces. <laughs> hey, oh, that's awesome. Thank <laughs> you so I'm much. I'm seeing you in a, in a different window on Zoom. Hey, hello. Hello. Hi, hi guys. Hi, hi, hi. How you doing? How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> You guys, when somebody first told me there is a there is a channel called Our Stupid Reactions, I was like, what? <laughs> and they're, they're like, you don't know. This was like three years ago, not yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. I said, no. I said we all we all watch it. We watch it all the time. <laughs> I'm yeah, so no. disconnected that I don't know about these guys. <laughs> I know. How could you not know about Oh, that? my word. Exactly. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I watched your entire, uh, I watched your entire reactions to Fuzzy, all the episodes. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, yeah, we course, we course. loved Farzi. Like, yeah, happy, uh, happy that we could thank happy you. that we could have good reviews. Because, yeah. <laughs> uh, we always are gonna we're always gonna be honest. We loved Farzi. Oh yeah, yeah. I loved everything you yeah. guys thought. But thank you so much for for hopping on here. I know you guys are uh, really busy, especially with with promo. Um, but we are. I no, just wanted to give you because uh, once we once we started watching you guys after those two years, you know, every few every time I would we watch uh, a review or so. So we thought we should give you guys proper time, not just rush it. So whenever you guys want it, so we're here. Well, I appreciate <laughs> Thank that. You. Thank you so much. Very much. Uh, we we uh, we've loved everything uh, uh, you guys have have done so far. Um, in terms of obviously the the series and and all that kind of stuff, we're very excited for um, uh, guns and gulabs. Um, is that did I say that right? Am I saying gulabs right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you got you got you got it right. There's only yeah, one way good. to say it. Then. Uh, we're very excited for that one. Um, we, and we had so many things to say about it and, and the reaction. What are some of the inspirations that you guys took for Guns and Gulabs? Um, it, see, they're not specific films or anything. It's really uh, the whole era, the, the the cinema those days. So it's a texture we were more excited about than a specific than specific films that we gave nods to. Mm -hmm. It's really the you know, early 90s, late 80s texture, uh, just the setting, you know, the simplicity and the the at the topical layer, the stereotypical characters, you know, the honest cop, the big bad villain with a flair, you know, the guy does this, the you know, rag, the guy who wants aspirational hero. The beauty, all that. The idea was to go into that zone, which is a familiar territory, and then now try and see what we could actually do with these characters in terms of pulling the devil out of them or uh, creating the you know exploring the gray. Yeah, uh, it's so, it's basically yeah, uh, it's basically a you know not to that whole era. Yeah. Uh, life to a large extent, like how people were in the small towns and how India was back then, pre liberalization and all that. Mm -hmm. And of course, movies were a big part of our culture back then, so which is why mm -hmm. movies form a big part of uh, everybody's lives. And but yeah, but otherwise, it, it's not it's not necessarily a tribute, or it's not necessarily a you know look at a particular film, or you know, it's just in general the era, including the movies of that era. Mm. Read in a recent interview that you described yourselves as combining drama and wackiness on a pretty consistent basis, and <laughs> I, I think I know the answer to the question based on the trailer. Is that what we can expect from Guns and Globs? Are we going to have a combination of drama and wackiness? This is pretty actually a lot more comedic, though. This is actually, okay. yeah. I mean, all our previous shows, including Family Man and For Z, mm -hmm. have been at the heart of it. They've been dramas. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know with with uh, times of uh, levity and fun and, you know, organic humor. Mm -hmm. And so people do find it funny. But this one, I think I would classify, I wouldn't classify it as a drama. Even I mean, there could be some dramatic scenes here and there, uh, dramatic it's, moments. Uh, but, it's the other way around. Yeah. I think. Like we, it's it's a yeah. comedy, but has a dramatic depth that it, mm -hmm. it starts to explore. Uh, on the uh, on the comedy and, and the, uh, the drama, because you guys not at the, beginning of your career but earlier before the ott started obviously you had a lot more comedic in terms of not only directing but producing with Stri and 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 uh, go 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 gone and, and stuff like that um is do you do you enjoy 
one more than the other uh, in terms of drama to to comedy? Do you find one harder than the other as writers or directors? I think um, we try to we we are we started mixing them up, you know, mm-hmm. as we were growing as filmmakers. I I think ninety nine. Go go gone is just pure comedy, and mm-hmm. you know I think once we started doing three, a lot of satire came in social satire, um, some kind of messaging, and then the Family Man, of course, was a much more serious subject, but there's humor uh, in a, a lot of it. So I think we started mixing drama and comedy, and realized that the comedy is a humor is a, a really good vehicle to carry any any of the stuff that we want to say in a film or, you know, anything that you want to convey, humor became a, a, a really good vehicle for us. So... And uh, am I sounding better now? Do I sound yeah. better? Or do, I, do I still sound like a chipmunk? Sound yeah, better? You sound good to me. Yeah, <laughs> you, sure. you, All right. you, you hear him more than I do, so does he yeah, sound yeah. <laughs> different? <laughs> does he sound different to you? Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm just going to refrain at this point. We'll just continue. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, now that now that you put it this way, I realized, Raj, I realized that uh, with the exception of Shore in the City, uh, our second film, all the other films we have done would be classified as a comedy, uh, you know, at a certain level. It's like a, you know, crime comedy, a zombie comedy, a romantic comedy, action comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Family Man is the first one. I mean, after Shore in the City, Family Man would be the first one. I would call it a drama, mm-hmm. but yes, it's not like a heavy drama either. I mean. It could be heavy moments. It's a very strong, serious subject. But yes, at the heart of it, it's a, it's a drama. And is is the style that's definitively yours? Because anybody who writes anything about you guys or watches anything that you do, recognizes a very particular uniqueness to what you guys do creatively. Whether it's your screenwriting, your directing, or the things that you produce. Is that something you guys go after with intentionality, more with a business mindset, or is it just an outflow of who you guys are creatively, or maybe it's both? Uh, I think the third one. Yeah, it is kind yeah. of. I mean, see, it's organic to us, and we've been writing a certain kind of humor, a certain there was a certain kind of a genre blending that we kept we've been doing from our very first work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and. You know, it was a little offbeat initially, probably not so mainstream accepted. And there was a period in between where our films didn't really work. And so that would have been the time to do any kind of a course correction. But I would say uh, we stuck to what we used to do. And we, uh, yeah, we stayed yeah, in course. And, yeah. And I mean, if I can say that our stuff is now being more accepted as part of who we are and as part of, you know, mainstream filmmaking all the more reason to continue right we didn't change when we, when it was not working yes, now right. that it's working i mean will this stick yeah. to our guns yes uh, absolutely <laughs> what was it um like working with uh, for for guns and gulabs um working with this at least the the three main leads two of whom are our dosts uh in rajkumar and, um and then also not dokar shaman um uh, but uh all those three uh, there, what was it like working with them on this? Each one is a different. Uh, they approach the characters differently. Raj Kumar, of course, has got a huge range, and we worked with him before in three. Yes. So we know what we can do. We just want to give him a devilish twist this time. Made it a little deliciously devilish character out of him, mm-hmm. and uh, and which he pulled off. And he, in, in fact, started adding shades to it as we were shooting it. That's the fun with working with Manoj Bajpai or Raj mm-hmm. or. You know, so where, you know, you, you, they take off from where we have, from the script. And Dulkar, of course, of course, brought in a lot of swag and charm that was kind of organic already in it. And the poor guy had to hit the ground running because he was a last minute cast. He just oh, wow. came in a week ago, a week before the shoot started, even less. Oh my so, God. Damn. Yeah. And, and so imagine him embracing and owning this character, right? He was just walking in. It was like first scene. He was a bit nervous and was talking to me. And then he was like, I think he, we usually try and make it very easy for the actors, at least the ambiance. We try and create and make them do whatever they want. And we don't usually try and uh, uh, make them uh, like slog, make them slog. We use them as eyes out of fridge, I think, mm. so that they don't melt too much if you keep doing many takes. Mm-hmm. So we try and shoot it in very minimal takes. We usually design our shots. We know the edit. 
So we just do it in like one, two takes max. And just, you know, so it's more fun for them. And so it's freeing. So the next time there's, there's so much energy still that they'll come and say, you know what, I want to try this time. So when they want it, we give them more and more. So it, Dulkar was great to work with, just a charm, charming guy. And uh, uh, Adarsh Gaurav, you're going to see brand new shit. You, have you seen the whole thing? The, which one? The, the show? Have you seen the show? Did you guys get to watch the show? Or No, we, it doesn't, uh, we have not been sent any screeners or anything okay. yet. So, we, yeah. I, we, I, have you, I have you in my list, our personal list to send you guys the screener. So oh, we would uh, love it. Not, <laughs> we love it. You're going to get it today. Yeah, so, we would love that. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, and uh, yo, no, Adarsh Gaurav is great. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna say too much about him because you'll see it as, as the show uh, progresses, and in, he's he's awesome in it. He's our latest favorite find. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Gulshan Devaya is a crazy guy, like, and he just brings the edge to it. The the guy with the knife, the Atmaram character. Yeah. So he's he's great. He's our he's gonna be he's gonna be in many of our projects coming up. Looks like. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. And we've kids, worked with him once uh, before. Yeah, we've worked with him once before. We've done this uh, a segment of an anthology for uh, Amazon's Unpause, a segment yeah. called Glitch. It had a uh, uh, Gulshan Devaya and Sayami Kher in it. And uh, so when we were doing that, the question that crossed our minds and his minds that why aren't we already doing so many things together? We look like a perfect fit. Mm. It's like that's what everybody seemed to be asking. It's like, oh, you guys, it, it felt like a natural match, except it just took too, so long to happen. Rick, and I uh, only I only see your head, Rick. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, me too. There we go. I, okay. I was bothered by this. Yeah, I was, by the I, was, I was slowly disappearing. I'm just slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, and, the, and TJ Banu is the first time we're working with her. She's a natural. And uh, very fits in the role very well, uh, the the girl's role, and a couple of uh, our, our guys graciously stepped into even uh, like cameos and short roles. So Shreya and Pooja and you know of course Satish Kaushik Ji, he, that was his last uh, last uh, uh, role, mm. and he passed away right a few months ago, and that was something very saddening because. I think he's great. He's great in the show, and if you you you'll be wanting to see more of him. And I wish we had more of him. But yeah, so yeah, we had an excellent cast, one of the best uh, group of actors we could have for a series. And the kids, and the kids. I mean, they're going to be a revelation. I mean, uh, nobody knows who they are at this point, but when the show comes out, they're all going to be stars in their own right because yeah. they've yeah. done an amazing job. The high school kids. Mm. One of the things we talk about pretty consistently when we're referring to the, the greatness of filmmakers and the consistency with what they make is not just the casting that you alluded to, but uh, the process and the creative team being the same. Do you choose and keep with you a lot of the same folks in your creative team, whether it's your editors, your director of photography, your ADs, your production assistants? Is that is that a... Is there, a, is there a core that you like to work with or do you prefer to just branch out and work with as many people as possible? Um, uh, some of them, yes. I mean, we have a core creative team, like in our office, we have like our core team of our associates, assistants, that they are the constant for everything. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, our editor has been the editor for literally all our shows. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, and the background score has like four shows have been composed by one person, but Guns and Gulab, we got a new one because we are also now doing so many more shows and we don't want to tax these people too. So once in a while, it's good to have a couple of options. Um, but we'll keep going back to them, repeating them. DOP, we tend to keep changing because there's a lot of demand for DOP. Mm. No matter how well you gel, there's so much work for them, it's hard to get them. Mm. But uh, Pankaj Kumar is a DOP on the show and it's the same. The the core crew, the H, the uh, uh, the production designer, the cinematographer, and the costume designer have be repeated from Farzi to Guns and Gulabs mm -hmm. because they just happened to, you know, they were happening back to back with each other and we could get and them. And work out very yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. And the details, of, especially Farzi, if you look at the note making and stuff, the production design, the production design team and our creative support team, uh, they pretty much know how to make fake notes very well right now yeah. and now yeah now, now now they know how to process opm 
<laughs> they, there's no stopping them, man. These criminal yeah. masterminds in the production, <laughs> production design team. Yep. Uh, a lot. Uh, I've noticed a lot of times in your series, you've brought actors from different industries in. So basically, you're you're the pan India of the OTT uh, uh, platform, as uh, like Samantha uh, or uh, VJ and and Farzi and this time Dolker, and then obviously many others. Is that something you consciously like to do, or is it just these are talented actors and I just want to work with them? Both, I think. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Both. <laughs> okay. That was the first uh, one of the one of the freeing aspects of doing a series was to, for us, was to saying, "Hey, why should we limit it to Hindi alone? Why mm -hmm. can't we get people to speak their own language? It's okay because mm -hmm. the audience watching are a little different. We have subtitles and they're used to watching foreign shows." So why not? So we started doing that from the Family Man season one, where you know you have Malayalam speaking guys and with subtitles, and uh, so we just let it be. And Amazon at that point was really understanding that this is a great way to make a series in India, especially with the multicultures and multi languages we have. Yeah. And so we've embraced that. We've embraced our style since then, and we always look out for all over India to see who fits this character best. Suddenly we have like a big pool of people, so many great actors to work with. Yeah. all of them who never explored before so every show i think we always had even earlier we used to have but that was still trying to get them to speak hindi and all that but now it's a bit more much wider yeah no yeah and we, we and we always tend to make the characters close to who the actors are like uh yeah. like we just said to put this character is a familiar so so we're not, we're not we're not faking it like we're not making him somehow learn and speak hindi like a hindi speaking guy we make we let him speak his hindi Mm -hmm. the language that the ex to the extent that he's comfortable with with his accent mm -hmm. and it works because that's who he is the character is the same as the actor so it works mm -hmm. speaking of languages since you have a long standing <laughs> relationship with netflix now whenever you do something that originates in telugu and it lands on the platform can you encourage them to make that the primary selection on netflix with subs yeah. rather than hindi dubbed <laughs> Uh, Telugu, they do that, right? Uh, oh, yeah. tell, me, tell me about the number. I got it. I, I'll tell you something, right? All my all my folks who stay in the US have called me and complained that when they play for Z, it starts playing in English. Yes, oh. because they happen to be there, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, it's it's a Hindi show. The first option should be original language, right? With subtitles, with English right. subtitles, if you if you wish. Agree. And then choose the dubbing, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's a challenge, and some people they just watch and. Sometimes they don't know how to change the language. I mean, all kinds of issues, man. Yeah, it yeah, happens we, across platforms, though. It's it not does. Just, it uh, does. Yeah. It actually yeah. it happened to us. Um, not with one of your shows. The first show we ever reacted to, like did a a watch along to, was this, um, um, Sacred Games, and right. we, we started watching it, and we're like, "What the heck is going on? Why does everybody sound so weird?" It's because it started in English. It, like there was yeah. the English dubbed automatically. And we didn't realize it until I think the episode two and... that we could change it. So yeah, and 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 the, and the and the and the title of the show is in English, Sacred Game. So you I mean, how do you differentiate it from an English show? I mean, you probably thought it's an English show, right? Yeah, well just badly we, dubbed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's what we thought because this was yeah. the first year into the channel. So we were still very more stupid than we are now. Um, so you guys have now done so many series or are, are doing so many series now do you like that format more than uh you like other format like movies or, or stuff like that um it, since it's a lot more long form do you find it um creatively for more fulfilling uh than than you do films um as a filmmaker and storytellers you can find a better platform than a series just because of the fact that you could tell the story you want the way you want the way you want to weave, the way you want to cast, the way you want to structure it. It's just 360 freedom in terms of telling a, a story. Uh, so yes, it's it's freeing that way. It's amazingly freeing. And every filmmaker should be doing series just to experience the freedom. I mean, we change the way we shoot a lot of times. We've I've even picked up the camera a lot of times and I start shooting uh, stuff and there's... <laughs> It just feels like a playground. It feels like a you know a, a lot to do for a filmmaker. Um, having said that, as a cricketer, 
always give a cricket example is that you want to play all forms of cricket mm -hmm. so you know you want to you don't want to be left out anywhere and we of course we started off as feature filmmakers so we we are raring to get back we are really really wanting to get back it's just that once you're in here you before you know without one series and before you know we're like four <laughs> uh, so, but uh, yeah no we we, we want to get back and, and the it. and the subsequent seasons don't forget that so mm -hmm. yeah it's a <laughs> you get caught up in it and um yeah, there's a lot of work to do. But yeah, like you said, feature films is something we're dying to get back to because it's been a while now. And I think uh, everything we've learned in making this format and this long format storytelling, it, there's been a good learning. Now we can use this to go back into films and make our films a little different than how we were making it, say, before we started making all these shows. Mm. And... Do you, when you're visualizing, for example, and creating a series, it's probably different now because I'm sure you would be greenlit for multiple seasons, but when you're starting to write series and you're not sure if you're going to get greenlit for more than one series, do you still just let yourself visualize however many seasons it's going to be? Or do you think in terms of, okay, we're going to do a single season. And then if you get renewed, you go back to the drawing table and go, okay, now what? <laughs> Actually, actually, most platforms, uh, most platforms, when you approach them, regardless of who we are, like now or even in the first, for a very first show, they want multiple seasons. Mm -hmm. So they kind of want you to come with a show that can go over multiple. If, if you were to go and pitch a show saying, listen, this is a limited series, you're less likely to get picked. I mean, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And there are other reasons to pick it. If you're already a star and they want right, to work right. with you, they'll pick it anyway. But they're more like... If if you're a nobody and you go with a limited series, they're probably not going to pick it. They're going to pick a series that has a long run. But whether the green light or not is their prerogative at the end of the day, right? But they sure. want the option to have uh, multiple seasons. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, as filmmakers for us, I think uh, it's good. I mean, it's uh, good to have, you know, when something does well. I mean, you have most excitement coming up with the new fresh season, fresh characters. You know, if it does well, you you know, there is a certain level of excitement in doing a second season. But I think at some point, I, I probably true for every creator, you know, you start kind of wanting to end it and move on to a new subject, right? Very sure, rarely yeah. you'd be like, oh, I'm so happy doing that ninth season of my same show <laughs> in my 10th <laughs> year, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just yeah. don't just don't be like uh, the creators of Game of Thrones and just, you know, shit something out. Uh <laughs> If, I don't know if you have saying that last season of Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, no, I, I have, I have. I've read the sentiment <laughs> around it too. Yeah. I was, uh, I was not, I was not happy with it. Uh, I heard you say you guys are self-taught filmmakers. Do you ever wish you had gone to film school, or do you much prefer the on-the-job training? When I hear it's stories point. from people that have gone, a, it's a mood point now, career. right? Yes, yes, very but, much. But, but, yes. but, but when you hear the stories of people listening to watching all this, so two ways I look at it is that they list all these films that they have seen during film school, right? All kinds mm -hmm. of films. And stuff. So sometimes I think, shit, am I not educated enough that I haven't seen these specific films uh, once? Uh, and on one side, the other side thinks, oh my god, I would have slept through a lot of lot of those films. So mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. But uh, no, I, I don't think there's a better way to learn than yeah. doing it yourself. Um, I stick to it when a lot of, we go to these master classes and uh, they ask for, you know, what, ask us to give speeches and stuff. And that's the biggest advice we always say is to you have to make it yourself to um, get it right. You know, really, that's the best way to learn. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. The idea is to learn, I think. The idea is to learn any which way you can. If you can read up and somehow gather the information and learn what you need to learn and then make a film and make your mistakes and learn what you need to learn, well, right there, that's your film school. And for some people, if sitting in a classroom, having a structured way of somebody telling you what to do, doing your experiments, doing your class project, if that's the way to go, sure, that could be. I mean, I, I guess it depends on person to person. But for us, obviously, it looks like where we are today, looks like this has worked out well, right? Yes, That's why a little it's bit. a moot point. I mean, <laughs> yes. So well, it I, I would, yeah. No, it reminds me of Orson Welles was asked that question after Citizen Kane about how he, you know, did what he did without formal training on anything. And he said, the great thing about being a new filmmaker was I didn't know what I could not do. 
I, I, I just <clears throat> tried anything because I wasn't told you can't do that. And the, the yeah. I, how did you go? You've probably answered this question a, a lot of times, but how do, how do you guys go from engineering to becoming screenwriters, directors, producers, showrunners? <laughs> how did that happen? Boredom. <laughs> yeah. Monotony. Interest and passion. Yeah, interest and in, uh, boredom. Yeah, when you have boredom and monotony on one side and you have interest and passion on the other side, mm. uh, you tend to start looking at this and start learning. So yes, we learned a lot around the turn of the century. We learned a lot uh, on the internet, right up. And and uh, you guys, I mean, you guys know now, uh, like the late late nineties or perhaps like around two thousand, the plus or minus ten years was a really really good time for independent filmmakers. Everybody we know today, from Soderbergh to Tarantino to Nolan to who else, Kevin Smith and who else? Man, I'm missing some names here. Everybody. <laughs> kind of made their first film. Doug Lyman, Doug Lyman. Mm -hmm. They all ended up making their first films, experimental films around the time. Mm. Um, so that kind of gave us the motivation. That was the time where all you needed was a digital camera and a computer, and you could make a film, you could edit it yourself, and all you needed to know do was learn filmmaking. It's just the, so that at that point, we just had two yeah. of us going around, and you know, we, we, we kind of figured you know, how to hold the camera. Mm. And, and uh, you know we 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 got our own mic from Walmart. We fixed up our own little boom boom stick kind of thing, <laughs> and uh, put it put a little filming kit together. And it would be just the two of us, and we would even act in it because we couldn't get actors in those days, and we didn't know mm -hmm. how to get. It. So sometimes it would even be just DK holding it, and we put the mic, and I go and act in front of it and come out. We're just bad actors, but we still had to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's how we learned it. But yeah, the big, big jump was because for me, it was a little more existential, a, a bit of existential uh, thought thing. Mm. As we were going to work nine to five, mm. very mundane, monotonous jobs. Your life was laid out in front of you. I could see every step of the way. We had already done half of it, like in you know, a good Indian uh mm. Uh, kids do you you top your school you get great ranks you get a good job go to america all that stuff was happening and then i could see the entire path laid out now right then you get married have kids minivan walmart shopping the whole thing right and so thinking, wow so this is it so had to somehow figure how to get switch from i think left side of the brain to right side and see if we can start actually creating it and you'll see this monotony, um, this kind of thing featuring in our, like a, it's like a regular kind of frequent motif in some of our films. Mm -hmm. We even put the family man into, mm -hmm. uh, into a nine to five job for a bit. Sure. And uh, so we keep doing that, you know. So yeah, that's how we switched over, I think. Mm. And our office and the office in our shows or in our movies, like I think we've had an office, like a corporate office in at least three or four different movies for movie slash shows by now. Like it was there in Go Go Agon, it was there mm -hmm. in A Gentleman, it was there in Family Man. And it's always invariably called uh Unitech. Uh -huh. Oh. Ring a bell. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it does. I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big fans of Office Space and like the best ever office movie made ever. And like okay, Agreed. that's our that's a tribute. Agreed. Yeah, it's, my, it's my stapler. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a good impression. That. I love that movie. I'm going uh, to burn down the whole office. Yes. I'm gonna, <laughs> I had to put a subtitle to see what is he saying? What's he saying? <laughs> what do you think he's mumbling? Yeah. He actually says it that I'm going to burn it down before it comes across. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need you to come in. Uh, I love that movie. Uh, yeah. What What's do you? Oh my God, we gotta go on on this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go what? Ahead. What? Uh, what do you guys feel you get out of a directing partnership? Because obviously, it's not for everyone. Directors oftentimes don't work well with other people. Um, in terms of like uh, other cr telling them what to do. So, what? What do you feel like you get out of it? And what is the most difficult aspect of being in a director partnership? We learned the, the we learned uh, to make films with each other. Mm -hmm. That was the way we've learned it. We came in together. It's not like we found each other and said, let's, you know, two directors saying, let's come together and kill each other. That's what <laughs> Lender happened, right? 
so this is we were yeah. more of uh, yeah uh, no we we learned it we we came in together so it's it's great we're in synergy it's like two heads is better than one so we can't we can make stupid stuff or like at least at least there is a safety net of not being stupid or silly or you know so you know you catch you catch all that you catch all the stuff how how good you want to make it is depends on how well you write and all that stuff but at least the bottom uh, there is a layer is is kind of safe because you are looking out you are you know being a little more tighter on your content at that point and we it, and we can do a lot more work with two of us we do tend to shoot a lot we shoot shoot we we shoot quickly on a set we distribute tasks we edit uh, we edit we're also time. able to do yeah we're also able to do so many things together right i mean there are at least three or four shows at any time happening mm -hmm. so that way that way there's a nice i mean uh workflow mm -hmm. but uh, yeah i mean uh, yeah the short answer to that is yes two directors you throw them in a room and say make a film together they're going to kill each other but if you're two individuals who became an entity as a director, like that's true mm -hmm. for even the brothers, even bro any right. brothers, Cohen brothers, watch out yeah. these, any, any, because they would have, they would have spent so much time together talking about making movies, learning, making movies before they started making movies, their journey gets merged into one. Yeah. You know, is, that's yeah. what the, that's what the Daniels did, right? The, is that, is that how they did it? Right. The, the directors of everything ever all at once. That's what, that's how they do it. Oh, right? they're, they're, they're duo too. Oh, yeah. Forgot yeah. About that. yeah. 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 Stranger, yeah. stranger things are duo too, right? Yes. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's becoming far more common. Um, yeah. yeah. They're all it, brothers. It, they're all brothers. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So of all the things that you do, because you guys do a lot, it, it, what would be your favorite thing and what would be your least favorite thing that you have to do in the industry? Uh, in part of filmmaking process? Yeah. yeah. Um, or, or anything, because you've got, I mean, anything. that's a big question because you guys write, you direct, oh, yeah. you produce, I, you show run. I mean. We can go through a lot yeah. of things. First, uh, earlier it was trying to get the actors to understand what we're making mm. uh, and not, and trying to kind of resist the changes they try to push on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that still happens a bit, but at least right now they come to us saying that we want to be in your kind of a film. So that's why we're coming to you versus earlier. It was just very tough to make them understand that this is the humor I want. I want, I don't want so high. I want this kind of sensibility. I don't want to be so loud. Can you cut down on the outfits? They're just too loud. All kinds of things. Hmm. The sensibilities were, were the toughest, toughest ones initially to, to kind of fight those little battles that happen all the time. Yeah. Uh, was one of the shitty ones. DK, what about you? Yeah, I know. When, uh, when it comes to roles about making, right? I mean, I don't think there's any role we hate, right? When we are writing, we're enjoying the process of writing. When we're directing, we love the process. When we're show running, of course, it gets a little stressful uh, because we're not directing, we're only show running, uh, but, you know, we get used to it. I know the director is good. That's also <laughs> an enjoyable process. Yeah, and producing is probably the, uh, you know, when when it comes to it, it's also the largest headache of all these things, just getting everything in order. Sure. But sure. we have learned that we have to produce our stuff uh, at the very least so that we have control. Uh, right. Not just creative control, the control on how things are going. I mean, if you want to make a mistake, let it be our mistake, right? I mean, right, right. you know, you don't want to overspend on something and certainly not have budget for something. As a producer, we get to control that aspect of it as well. So we know we, know we only have this much. What are you going to do with this? So that has become a necessity as well, and uh, uh, producing. So I think we enjoy all aspects of it uh, at varying levels. There's nothing we hate, and I honestly think if there is something we hate now, we would be pawning off to somebody else. Mm. That job, what? yeah, right. What? You would be pawning it off to somebody else, right? <laughs> if you're really we hear you do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's. Tough. <laughs> so you guys have worked with some some great actors, obviously. Um, Manoj Bajpayee, obviously a, a dose of ours as well. Um, but with, there hasn't been a lot of, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, A-list actors join the OTT series. Shahid being one of the first ones to do that. Was it difficult? Did you have to convince him or was he just on board once you told him the story? No, he was. He called. He, he brought he it said, up. 
he brought, brought it, it up, up surprisingly. Yeah, yeah awesome. we were family man. We were doing, we were right, developing Citadel. And then he said, and we were talking about doing a film like Shahid and us. And we're like, by the way, guys, uh, how, what do you think? I mean, do you have any series for me? I'm like, mm. uh, you sure mm. you want to do a series? He's like, yeah, why not? I'm like, great. Up on board. I mean, come on board. So uh, that's, you know, and uh, we happened to have a concept called Farzi, mm -hmm. which was perfect for, mm -hmm. which we already had in mind. We had him in mind. It was just not in a series format at that time. And uh, so it was like, it was an easy thing. He got on board. I mean, now in Citadel, India, the India leg, we have uh, Varun on board. And now everybody's understanding the power of this medium and everybody's kind of understood however big a star you are. Um, yeah. Nothing beats a good story, story and a good role, mm -hmm. and and an OTT show, uh, a show like this can uh, reach much wider audience than, uh, for example, a film because this has a little more of an international reach. Yeah. So people do cherish that, like they do appreciate that. Like a Shahid, for example, Farzi would have been seen a lot more across the world than perhaps even the biggest blockbuster that would have been seen by a lot of people within India. Yeah. And right. I, you, have you noticed that that changing for big stars? Like one day we'll see Shah Rukh Khan in an in a, in a OTT had, series uh, with you guys. We have had uh, uh, two, like I would say top three, I don't know how you rate stars these days, but yeah, like two of the top four stars asking us that let's do a series. That's awesome. So it's, it's a matter of time. I mean, it's just a matter of when. So both we right. sat with both of them about uh, doing a series and we just didn't have a story that was perfect for them at that point. But yeah, it's on. It's it's, awesome. it's, it's Everybody's on. They, they all want to do it because as, as an actor, that's when they get the most to express. Mm -hmm. That's when they, you know, they, there's yeah. always an actor in them that want to break out, right? And show what all they can do. And this is the best platform. Yeah. That's one, and in in the Indian industry, that's one of the one of the perks of a series versus a film. Like a film has box office money and a lot going for it, and the big screen thing. Meanwhile, a series offers something, which is an international reach. An Amazon show or a Netflix show goes to about two hundred countries, and people get to watch it. And mm -hmm. that turns out to be one of the pluses, uh, if you, you know, no matter you know, for for the stars. That uh, probably that's not that's probably not true for say an actor in Hollywood. Because the films do go as wide as the series, which is why right. that's where the difference comes. Yeah. Yeah. And is that something that has always been in your mind? Uh, obviously, you're going to think about when you're writing. It's always going to be Indian at heart and Indian audience and, and Indian <laughs> stories. But uh, have you always had in mind having a much broader reach outside of India to uh, all around the world? When we, saw the family man, when we saw the yeah. Family Man play out, right? So it was premiered in LA at that point. We didn't even think about it. And we were in that, uh, I don't know what the theater is called, the Golden Globes, where they do that thing. Mm. And we had interaction with the, 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 uh, the critics there. We realized that we didn't even think of the international audience. We just made it as mm. an authentic Indian product. Um, and I could see a lot of them, pretty much most of them, just liking it so much and just interacting, talking about it. And I realized we didn't even think of them when we made it. Uh, but it went to places and I was landed in Barcelona one day and I had it. It was a family man article on the paper. I was like, what is this? And so I had to send mm. a picture to the friend and say, read it out. So so I didn't, we didn't, so I, so far we haven't thought and designed a project thinking or a series thinking that it should be for international audience. But it is already making its way in its own way, in its own organic way. Like for was when we saw it in top, what was it, number four in the global list, we were like, wow, yep. this is pretty cool that the number of the consumption is so high. So I think from now on, whatever we make, we're going to keep that in mind that everybody's going to watch it. Not that yeah, to not me. Not just now on, right? I mean, I think we kind of learned it after Family Man. One that you may or may not make it for an audience outside of India, but you have to acknowledge and be aware that a large audience outside of India is going to be watching it, which is not yeah. true for a film. A film you could, for a regional film or a Hindi language film, you could make a film saying 
I know who the people are that's going to be watching it. Sure. And you make it for them. Mm. Meanwhile, you for a series, you think, yes, my target audience is going to be this, but everybody in the world will be watching it. So keep that in mind. But DK, you know? do you think uh, do you think we we will we'll be changing anything we do? Because I'm thinking, what did, what do you think we'll even change if we are thinking we're making an international series? <laughs> that's because we were already I'm... making. That's because we're already making inter- international quality stuff. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> just kidding. No, just, no you, you are. <laughs> no, you are. You, you are. are. <laughs> There's some terrible I know, shows. I know. You know, I, I, I no think jokes aside, you just have to be conscious. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only yeah. thing that will that will dictate or change would be the language, if at all. Hmm. You know, but then it's narcos. There's everything else in made in their language. Yeah, so we don't change the language don't... either. We don't change the language either because we're making it in Hindi and there's a big, large smattering of Tamil and uh, family just, man too. So. Uh, yeah, maybe just marketing, you know, just kind of yeah. t- uh, get it towards the international. Yeah, yeah. I say it in the sense of uh, quality consciousness. That's all. Uh, yeah. Whether I mean, as in, you know, if if you think your VFX is subpar, and you think you could get away, uh, you probably won't. You know, yeah. that's the something right. like that. Yeah, right, right, right. So you yeah. you guys would know this better than uh, others because obviously Amazon and Netflix and even Disney with the Disney Hotstar have been doing a lot of international projects, Indian projects uh, as of late. Have you noticed other platforms, maybe hopefully one day HBO uh, being interested in like uh, doing series like that? Have any of the other platforms reached out? You don't have to say specifically, but have you noticed other uh, ones like that being reaching out? Yeah, we've had uh, exactly three three platforms, the top ones. Mm-hmm. Each they did they did reach out to us to make uh the 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 top ones whatever the main ones they did reach out and said let's make a series together uh we are in talks but each one had us a different kind of an idea like one of them wanted it to be an epic ish series that if you could do some kind of a grand scale something big somebody else was saying could you do it in English mm-hmm. and somebody had something else so we're just trying to see. It's more from, I don't want to take anyone's story unless we jump at it instinctively. Mm-hmm. And so I'd rather just make it our own. So we're only used to making it homegrown, like in really the story is coming out of us initially. Mm-hmm. So we kind of know what to do with it in someone else's and figuring how to do. I'm sure we can figure that, but I think we're, we're more excited to really create something from scratch so, and they're open to it it's just it, and i think it, and it, like always it takes a long time so and you know we got to get to it so yeah a, a question I've, I've wanted to ask about uh, d- what directors and producers do that you don't hear often talked about is the creation of trailers or teasers do you guys maintain i i think i know the answer to this question you maintain direct oversight and final decision making with the creation of a trailer as a standalone kind of art form with high importance. <laughs> yeah, no, I love the answer it. Is, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 It made every single one of our trailers since our first film to now. I would say, I would even say that we sit with the trailer cutters, we sit with them and actually design uh, a, a, a quite a bit of it. Sometimes, for example, Guns and Gulab's teaser uh, was something that wasn't even the template. We mm. didn't we, we didn't know what to put. Even the Family Man, the very first one, uh, it all you know you get a lot of ideas. You know they sure. have a lot of ideas. Everybody pitches. It's not like whose idea is uh, I want my idea. It's like whose idea is better is what we go with. So in fact, with Guns and Gulab's, well, the fun fact is that. It just wasn't, we didn't know, I mean, it was tough to create a one minute or a 40 seconder. And then we decided to come up with this line that in, that's a theme of the of the whole show. <coughs> Actually do that as the as the running line around which the, the the shots are cut with. So, you know, we sit, we really sit with them. I mean, the, the, uh, uh, yeah, Ankit, who cut the trailer for Guns and Gulabs. And he Lots also... of appreciation. Yeah, there's a lot of appreciation coming for the trailer of Guns and Gulabs, right? Who, and, who's Ankit? Oh, yeah. uh, and we just, yeah. I sit, we sit with one guy. There's just one guy, Ankit, and we just uh, sit with him and do it for the last few series. It's it's him. 
for all the feature films, we used to sit with another guy called Nilesh and that was it. We just go sit there, do it over and over and over again, all kinds of things. So yeah, yeah. No, now, we, we now our shows, our shows <laughs> across our shows across Amazon and Netflix have the same trailer cutter, right? So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Whose, <laughs> whose idea was it to put because I love that part of the oh yeah no that, that was an idea it's actually in the script it's oh, actually it? in the script it is in the awesome. script I mean when we were writing the it's script it's in the show myself it's in the and, show. Uh, oh, okay Suman, cool. right, myself the and uh, Suman the three of us you know it's kind of like a little bit of it is from our childhood right uh, where we're growing up and so there's all these English songs I mean the few English songs we would listen to one of these was I've been waiting another one is the Brian Adams uh, you know uh, look into my eyes and these are a couple of songs that every, all of us even in small towns you know in India were, were listening to we were all aware of it so they made it into the show and of course a lot of other Hindi songs made it into the show and uh, so that's the one of the songs that was there and it was very expensive to get the rights and we managed and there were a lot of other songs we wanted to put that we didn't get the rights so they're not in the show at this point yeah, I was going to ask about the, the the rights there. I bet that wasn't easy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, your Guns and Globs has the most views of any series ever. Is that what? Is that true? Who said that? Uh, yeah. Who per, said that? Per, 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 Perina, Guns and Globs has the most uh, nearing six three million views on YouTube of most of any series who, ever. In I India. mean, uh, who, uh, yeah. I mean, we just saw that it's seventy three million views just today and then we're thinking oh my god so our team went off and searched every possible trailer uh for <laughs> all the series like to Come see where, where we are at yeah yeah like, we our own, uh, yeah that's our awesome own, yeah we beat our family man season two was like 58 that was like oh my god because series don't have so many yeah they don't get so much and uh i think looks like these guys are now looking at all the series are on the world and they found Game of Thrones being 80 right now. So I'm like, really? We're close to Game of Thrones? <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> You're soon going to be the most torrented uh, series ever again in India. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, can we expect any, because um, I know it was a thing in Family Man, but one shots in, in Guns and Gulabs. That was, that was one of our favorite parts you're, of, you're uh, of family is he, is he is he freezing up or uh, he is, is for me too oh, yeah geez, he, he, froze. he froze can you hear me yeah yeah, yeah now we can. okay back. can can we expect any uh is one of our favorite parts i'm and i'm sure you've answered a billion times about the one shots and family man oh. uh in, in guns and gulabs no we have oh. to treat each series with a different style yeah otherwise yeah. it gets repetitive the whole the whole yeah. excitement for us is also to even change the action the style of action is different from how it was mm -hmm. in the family man how is in citadel that we were we just shot and mm -hmm. and uh guns and gloves is yeah i mean um, surely there is an element of there is moments of thrill and action in it but it's still not i mean it's not an action series it's a mm -hmm. crime fun you know comedy Paul big series. I, I can promise that the action is going to be fun and funny in in Guns and Gulabs, not like Farsi or the Family Man. Wait, can't wait for that. <laughs> um, can also are there any? Um, I wanted to ask this before. Is there? Are we going to get any connection between Farsi and Family Man? There's a lot of theories, obviously, out there. Uh, are there? Farsi is there and ever, Family Man. Yeah. Is that what I said? Yeah. Farsi and family men are I mean, there. We've, or... we've, we've started down. Sorry, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I think go, go froze ahead. there. Uh, yeah, we started down that path already, right? We've, we've, we have now combined those two worlds by virtue of them existing in the same universe in the same time, you know, with characters making cross appearances. So, yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's exciting for us also uh, without necessarily you know, having to force it in, but yeah. there are going to be, you know, nice moments when we can perhaps, you know, have a nice cameo. Mm. And what else, what else is in the hopper for you guys? We obviously know of the, what we've just been talking about, but is there anything else that you want people to know that's upcoming uh, or is everything in creative process right now and kind of hush hush? No, it's I mean, there is a, 
uh, is pretty much everybody knows about it. We just finished shooting the series for Citadel India, our mm -hmm. series mm -hmm. uh, with uh, uh, Varun Dhawan and Samantha. And that's an action series now. Now that's an action series, action drama, mm -hmm. action drama, love story. Uh, <laughs> different yeah. genre again for us uh, than from what we've yeah. done before. Sure. And we have a a, a crazy, crazy epic-ish series called Gulkanda Tales. That's what I was hoping we'd talk about a little bit. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's 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 just every time we say Gulkanda Tales, we have to smile because it's just something yeah. <laughs> so exciting. You know, and it's, so yeah. It's kind of epic. It's like, you know, it's kind of epic. That's yeah, the tagline. That's the vibe of it. Gulkanda Tales. Yeah. That's, kind of that's, that's an official tagline. Gulkanda Tales. It's kind of epic. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, can you see me? Period. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's like Game of Thrones. Ooh. I, IMDb, <laughs> IMDb shows Pankaj and Abhishek attached to it. That's accurate, yes? Sorry? Kunal Kemu. Kunal Kemu. Uh, Pankaj Tripathi, yes, Kunal Kemu. Uh -huh. yes. Kunal Kemu, Pankaj Tripathi, Patra Lekha uh are the yeah are headline the headline the show great and mm -hmm. uh, it's almost ready so yeah. well i don't know if you can hear me so this sucks i'm sorry <laughs> something's going on with the internet here corbin corbin come back there he is i know I know. I'm sorry. It's, can you hear me? Voice. He's the voice of God. Yeah, can you we hear can, me? We can, we can hear, hear you, you, yes. Oh, my word. I'm so sorry. This is awful. I'll, I'll, I'll go and end it here with the, the last question uh, for you. Uh, I see on IMDb a Go Go Gone sequel. Is that accurate? It does. It, it does. Is, is that what it says? Oh. Is that, that's what it says. Is, so is that true uh, or is that is that fake news? Uh, what would I say? What? Ten or more? Yeah, it's, it's ten years, right? Since the release, years. it's been wow. Ten years. We recently had the ten years. Yeah. It just feels like two years ago, and just three of Go Go Gone. It's so fresh it looks like and like people keep asking for it over and over see I, you know we try to make a new world we try to move because that's what is more exciting to create something brand new again go go gone of course has special place and special love i don't know i don't know there are too many logistical logistical uh complications with that yeah otherwise mm -hmm. it would have come five years ago. That's a good reaction expression for that <laughs> it, it is. It is from that answer. Just nonplussed. I, uh, um, nonplussed. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm a, yeah, there he is. I, I hear him again. I don't know if <laughs> it recorded any of it because I can't, I heard like just a few little snippets of what you just said. So <laughs> oh, God. I hope it's only one of you. He is, but we can, if it didn't record it, we can say that they didn't tell us very much and you can all keep talking about it all you want. We had to cut it because it was confidential. <laughs> um, well, I will go because the... like the US, <laughs> like where you don't have internet connection. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it happens. Going. Um, <laughs> well, before the internet completely cuts out, I'll end this. So he's, so... he's trying again. Bless his heart. Oh, my goodness. You're back. The oh my god thank you guys so much for your time i don't know if you can hear me <laughs> we can we yes, can yes, hear yes. you now this is can you hear us awful. can you hear us yeah i can i can uh I i'm so sorry us, right i don't know would be asking i think that's yeah. the case uh and i i'm i'm hoping it's just his output not his input in regard to recording you guys talking and getting you guys on camera this is terrible. Anyways, thank you guys so much uh, for for being on with us. I'm sorry about the internet. There's been we... times. 
we've needed to do reactions of things and he's been away and we haven't been able to do them because he's had issues with uh, Wi-Fi connectivity and things. It's not just, it's everywhere Darwin, in the world. Darwin, you, you just have to switch from modem, you know? <laughs> 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 now we, have, we can make all the jokes we want now because he can't hear us. Exactly. Or did you exactly. Hear oh my goodness. I can hear you. I can. We can hear you. We can hear you. Talk slow. We can hear you. I I I ended the uh the uh, well, uh the... in in the event that he keeps coming in and out as a closing thought, whether it's recorded or not, um we've we've been very excited to talk to you guys you your creativity is consistently original the international audience is clearly embracing what you do because the quality of what you guys do on an artistic level is so so high and obviously like you said before if it's if it's not broken don't don't fix it just keep doing what you're doing you're one of the most exciting creatives in the industry and not just india but in the world and we're really grateful in the midst of all the busyness that you guys have, with all that you do, that you'd you'd spend time with us and 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 allow the great big stupid family to get some insight into what you do, because what we're saying is not just our opinion. We are repeatedly in and yeah, I'll do it. Corbin, we finished wow. everything. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, man. I don't know what the fuck just happened. That was. <laughs> I heard, I heard, I heard most of you guys. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> we had a good laugh. We made a bunch of jokes on you, and then yeah, yeah, yeah I heard it was awesome. Thank you so much. All right, thank I you so much. Appreciate talking to you, man. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye.